because it has torn up one of the greatest minds of radio of our time down. So it was heartbreaking to see Wendy in that type of situation, bro. I'm one of the hottest DJs off of Hot 97 because she wanted to put up a picture of him getting his pants pulled down. We're handcuffed and taken down to the precinct, and um, eventually Puffy and his bodyguard, Wolf, were overheard talking about their plot to bribe the driver to take the rap for the gun, and Puffy was overheard saying, and I quote, because the prosecutor said this, I can't go to jail, I'm Puff Daddy. Well, uh. you know. <laughs> Wendy Williams and Sean Puffy Combs go way back, and Wendy hasn't exactly had good things to say about the bad boy rapper. And now, with Puffy swimming in lawsuits, everyone's remembering the fact that she warned us about him years ago, but no one listened. It all started back when the East Coast vs. West Coast rap war was at its peak, with Bad Boy Records and Death Row Records vying for the top spot, and Diddy Combs ran the bad boys with an iron fist. He had some of the most popular artists of the era signed to his label, and their songs were on constant rotation on the radio. Enter Wendy Williams, outspoken radio shock jock for Hot 97, who had the gall to talk about Combs and how his artists dominated the radio. And that was the wrong thing to say, because as Diddy's former bodyguard Gene Deal will tell you, if the music mogul said the sun rose in the West, radio broadcasters wouldn't dare say otherwise. With the radio stations in New York, motherfuckers didn't breathe hard if Puff didn't want them to. This led to her getting jumped by one of his groups, Total, outside her workplace. She talked about this incident on her radio show, The Wendy Williams Experience, in 2009. I remember I got off the air one day and them, <laughs> them total bitches were downstairs waiting and everybody upstairs at the radio station was looking down, egging it on, waiting for something to go down. She said her then boyfriend, Kevin Hunter, had gotten her out of the situation. I wasn't yet married. My knight in shining armor screeched up in his car just out of nowhere. Didn't even know. I didn't even know what was about to happen. Skell hiding like a girl. <laughs> Thanks, Skell. I'm standing in the door like what? And I'm literally about to go through now. I'm not like what? Like what? Let's fight because I'm not one of those type of broads. And plus there was three of them. God only knows what would have happened if I got out on the sidewalk and everything like that. Papers going flying, you know, scale cowering. The little Chinese man that drove the van, they were coming. There was no security or anything. It was just them three fighting broads. And me. And my coworkers at shot standing upstairs trying to look down to see it all jump off. They all knew. When I said goodnight to everybody, everybody's pressed up against the window. I didn't even walk or bother asking, what are you all looking for? Because, you know, when the clock strikes, it's time to go. It is time to go. Nobody rushes out of a place faster than. She added that none of her coworkers had bothered to warn her, instead looking on to see the show. Nobody put you on? No! That's what I'm saying! Nobody put me on, they're all pressed up against the window, looking down, knowing what the hell was about to happen. I, I didn't get a chance to hit the sidewalk, you know what I'm saying? Before I knew it, ah! Out of nowhere, nobody called, it, it's not even like he, he knew, I, just, it was just like weird, almost like karma. You know, one of those, um, another sign to say that this, this is the one for me, I guess, kind of, sort of. Next thing I know, he's out of the car and uh, there's a whole bunch of rah-rah going on outside and I'm still trying to figure out what the hell is going on. And I send Cower and Skell out on the sidewalk and he comes back in and says, it's total outside and they were, they were about to set it on you. I was none the wiser. The bastards that I work with, they all know. That's what's killing. Williams also talked about the incident in a 2018 episode because the situation escalated from getting jumped by a girl group to getting fired from her job at Hot 97. And while people were initially hesitant to believe her, the truth still ended up coming to light. She tiptoed around the topic in a 2013 interview with VLAD TV when discussing homosexuality and fashion in hip hop. You know, what's worse, you know, hip hop wearing skirts or hip hop being closeted and having a plethora of kids to prove manhood that, you know, and, and denial of something that 
shouldn't you shouldn't have to deny which is your sexuality mm -hmm. so I hear what Jamar is saying but uh, we come from a very homosexual era of hip-hop as well uh, there was a radio personality once upon a time her name was Wendy Williams and uh, she was practically burned at the stake for um, talking about such and now it's all come full circle. There were many situations, none of which to talk about, but there were many situations um, back in the day in, in my career. And um, it's all coming full circle now. In case you're wondering what homosexuality has to do with her getting fired, it starts with one of Diddy's baby mamas, sort of. Back when the East vs. West rap war was at its highest, stylist Misa Hilton was involved in something that made tensions go sky high. Mother to two of Diddy's sons, she and her infant son Justin Combs, were photographed with Suge Knight, the head of Death Row Records and Diddy's sworn rival, and that photo made its way to Wendy Williams. According to former bad boy president Kirk Burroughs, that's how she got fired. Instantly all left the office 19th Street, some in cabs, some in cars, some running all the way down to Hudson Street where Hot 97 was to get down there just to handle the situation <laughs> and make sure that that picture was not exposed to the masses and was not delivered through Wendy Williams. And all of that frick of fracas, if you look back, history will tell you that she was let go from Hot 97 over that and had to go to another city to operate out of. And I think she remembers that in a uh, in the way she should remember as something that happened that ran her out of town and then she was able to come back and be the Wendy Williams that she is now today with all the success that she's had but that was a snafu that day with us and with, with uh, uh, my godson uh, and but people even closer to the rapper revealed the real truth and it's in line with what Wendy herself said Enter Jean Deal, who's recently been busy spilling all of Puffy's dirty laundry for the whole town to see. Puff got one of the hottest DJs off of Hot 97 because she wanted to put up a picture of him getting his pants pulled down. You understand what I'm saying? He said that a man had pulled down Puffy's pants and it had gotten recorded. We were in Cancun. And we were on our way to the Island of Women. You understand? And this is all it was, bruh. For whatever reason, dude was playing with Puff. He went behind him and grabbed his trunks and pulled them down. When he grabbed his trunk to pull them down, some girls that was taking pictures. They took the, that picture and emailed it back to Wendy Williams. Wendy had received those photos of Puffy and intended to release them. Wendy Williams said she had him in a compromising position and like it was gay porn or something like that. And she was going to put it out. So they stopped her from putting it out and the rapper threatened to take every artist he had links to off of the radio if she wasn't fired. Talk about overkill. What happened was is that Wendy had somehow shown people that email. You hear me? She's shown people that email. Puff told Hot 97 if they didn't get rid of her, you understand? Before he got back in New York, that they was not gonna get any music from any of his friends, any of the record labels executives that was cool with him. Everybody was gonna boycott, boycott their station. The next time Diddy returned to LA, Wendy Williams' career had basically been pushed into a fire pit. We was out in L.A. for about three days before we landed back in New York. Wendy Williams was in the radio station in Philly. It was over for her. She was fired. Yet another incident Wendy Williams exposed the rapper was when she sat down for an interview with former bad boy artist Mark Curry. 
who wrote a book called Dancing with the Devil on his experience working with Combs. And, um, and he did not have good things to say about the rapper. I mean, you you looking at this a man that that, that has a, a, a shadow yeah. of things that follow him <sighs> and it'll rain on you too you yeah, understand yeah. this yes. that dark your book that that puffy was in fact with kim porter at the time that he started cheating on kim with jennifer lopez and you were the third wheel sometimes and he'd always have to have a third wheel when he and jennifer the lopez would go out. A co-sign. i was a co-signer yes yeah you know when the phone rings yeah. and just don't Shine. answer the phone take the phone off the hook of course she did make a comeback the Wendy Williams show ran for a good 14 seasons, and she sometimes took the chance to poke fun at Puffy. She brought up his name changes, and even discussed that interview where Jennifer Lopez was asked about her exes. Like, that she said, let them both drown, but then she came back, she backpedaled, and she said, you didn't see this part, she said, no, you know, Ben, you know I love you, and Puffy, I love you too. I adore that we're the last two people on earth who refer to him as Puffy. I don't like when people change their names in the middle of our relationship. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, don't tell me to call you Diddy. I, I know you as Puffy, that's it. Um, I would let them both drown too, Jen. I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> I, and, I, and I mean it. She also mentioned him in her 2004 book, saying that she held a certain level of contempt for Puff after he single-handedly tried to ruin her career. She wrote, the hell he put me through, I will never forget, but I don't hate him. She also pointed out his controlling tendencies, especially in regards to his power over girlfriend Cassie as a record producer. This was back when the couple first split after Diddy cheated on her. Lose your head, you never know when they're gonna pop up on the scene. Like he's mogul, like he can hire a plane right now. Zoom it to South Africa, <laughs> land on the, on the roof of the hotel where she's staying, okay? Pay people off at the front desk, give me the key and let me up in her room. Like, I'd be, I'm already paranoid as a person. But to know... She also said she didn't see him settling down until he was old. And until then, he had all these women hypnotized. Uh, well, Wendy, do you ever think Puffy will settle down? And I said, yeah. Like most men who think they're playboys when they're young, somewhere around 68 to 78 years old, when he needs help with his ass. The show also brought up the time he assaulted his son's football coach and ended up getting arrested. For assault with a deadly weapon, and battery, and making terroristic threats. The terroristic threat charge was just added this morning, right? Granted, most of these were hot topics that were part of her show, but she dropped hints here and there, and for a music mogul that got her fired over a few pictures, it's doubtful he liked her talking about him. But it all came to a full circle moment when in 2017, Combs actually showed up on her show. This was the official end of their years-long feud. He had only good things to say about her, and they both made peace with each other. I must say, it's been a long time coming. Yeah. And I want to just tell you how proud I am of you. Because... <laughs> because I, I, I don't think you get enough credit for being the first one to really cover our culture, you know, hip hop culture and, and also hip hop celebrities and, and, and just understanding that it's news, not just saying that's all that you cover, but you started shedding light on our culture and our people and thank you very much. And with that in mind, <laughs> I know I pissed a lot of people off, including you. Mm -hmm. But this is a full circle moment, yes, everybody. Yes. Get into adult yeah. conversation. Yeah, this yeah. Is full circle. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she returned the favor in a 2019 interview with Sway's Universe. Yeah. I appreciate uh, Puff. Yeah. And I appreciate that I don't have to call him Diddy. Because oh, he, 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 he told you that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know him as Diddy. That's, yeah, yeah, that's Puff. Puff. That's Puff. That's Puff. That's Puff. Anyway, no, I, I appreciate that. And I will uh, cherish that moment. And, um, and did, do, I, did do, I have to do any due diligence beforehand, or that was the first nope. time when you saw him? Okay. Puff wanted to come to the show, it's been a long time coming because you know, schedules have to be negotiated and whatnot. But he showed up, he smelled great, his stomach is flat. Heather, he was handsome, and uh, he ain't going nowhere, no. clearly, can't be stopped now. Can't stop, won't stop. Bad boy for life. Bad boy for life. That was a big moment for those yeah. who know. That was, and I, and I was happy for the both of you. Yeah. You know?
She even said that he had said that no questions were off limits for her interview with him, which she appreciated. All seemed good between them, with her continuing to poke fun at him at times. Now we're in a good place, so I'm not gonna mess this up. Yes, right? Like, we did a grown people makeup right here on the show. So if you missed it, you missed a good one. Anyway, but yeah. He loves her and admitted it and went into it like... Ironically, this was where she also discussed Diddy saying he wanted two children with Cassie, even though they had been together for years with no engagement in sight. He wants two more with Cassie. Yeah. Cassie's only 31. Yeah. Puffy's oldest, Justin, is 27, I believe. 24. Uh, oldest is Quincy, 26, and then Justin, 24. All right, the oldest Quincy said, well, maybe Cassie should ask for a ring before the kids. I said, these days, people don't need a ring. No. She's with Puff. <laughs> you get those two kids. As a matter of fact, Cassie, just have twins. But all that ended when Puffy and Cassie broke up after 11 years together, at which point the rapper was linked to 26-year-old Jocelyn Chu, she ended up dissing him about his taste in girls. You know, I'd love to, her to have a baby and marriage and, and all that other kind of stuff. Well, according to Love B. Scott, Puffy is now dating. <laughs> uh, Jocelyn Chu. Now, I'll tell you about her. She's 26 and they reportedly have spent some time together in Miami, and they also went to a Drake concert. And in true Wendy fashion, she called him out for publicly trying to get Cassie back when it could put unwanted pressure on her. You know, uh, but the older he gets, I guess the younger the girls have to get. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, maybe he feels like Cassie's old at 32. Oh, damn it, man. Granted, Diddy seems to have a track record for grand displays of affection, considering what he did to try and get Jennifer Lopez back. So I go to a window, and as they saw me, the person who was in charge out there or whatever, yes. saw me appear at the window. Yes. I guess that was their cue. Yes. And they released, like, hundreds of doves, white doves. Oh, my God, I can't breathe. Right, and I was like... <sighs> oh, my God! <laughs> Did it work? Did you go back with him? No, it didn't work. All right. She also alluded to his destroying people's career in another episode, where she gave his former artists, Black Rob and Danity Kane member, Aubrey O'Day as examples. People do what he wants. Once upon a time, there was a music mogul who sent his all-girl group. With the hot mess Diddy's got himself into, it looks like his career might actually be over for good this time. It's a damn shame that his name will go down as the laughing stock of hip hop. You had any semblance of respect left for Diddy after the Cassie filing, it's definitely gone after Little Rod, no question. And while it may have come at a time when Wendy herself is no longer active due to her health issues, people are taking this chance to look back on how much courage it must have taken her to speak out against someone who literally tried to end her career. It looks like Wendy Williams will get the last laugh, but we can only wait and see how Diddy's lawsuits end. That's all for now. Don't forget to share what you think in the comments below. For more updates and hit the bell icon.